So time for something different. It's time for an unboxing. And this literally just arrived. The Z590E gaming Wi-Fi. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Firecuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Firecuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So this literally just landed in, in our offices and I thought what better way to kind of show you what's going on to, you know, do a bit of an unboxing. So it's Z590, it has support for Socket 1200 processors, Rocket Lake support, which isn't even here yet, but the board is. So let's talk about the board. It's the Z590E gaming Wi-Fi, obviously successor to the Z490E which wasn't actually a Wi-Fi, but I believe it still had Wi-Fi. I don't know why they keep doing this. Every sort of generation, it's Wi-Fi, then it's not, then it is, then it's not. Basically, it's a mid-range board, but being a Zeus and being branded as, you know, ROG, you're likely to pay a little bit more for it. So let's see what we actually get inside. So inside, we get a little box, and inside that is... So this is Wi-Fi antennas. So we've got, by the looks of it, one Wi-Fi antenna for a Zeus Wi-Fi 6, and we have an ROG graphics card holder as well. We have the board itself, which I will get to in a little bit, but let's see what else we get inside. So driver disc, thank you for buying the, the board basically. A set of ROG stickers, user guide, always handy. And underneath here, we have a little pad for use, single-sided M.2 SSD. Stick this pad onto the existing M.2 pad. We have what looks like four SATA cables, two being right angled and two being kind of normal. A little, I think it's a belt buckle. I never understood why they include this. It's, you know, you're buying a motherboard, not a piece of apparel. Uh, you get some more of the M.2 single-sided uh, sort of pads. You get a fan, which tells us straight away, very much like X570, that potentially there may be some temperature issues, should we say? And this is gonna be handy for keeping, more than likely, the VRMs cool, not the actual chipset. You also get a little screw with a weird kind of bracket. Might be for M.2, maybe. You get some other screws, which by the looks of it are for attaching the fan into place. And some cable ties, or as the Verge called them, tweezers. Yes, we're still doing that. Let's get onto the board. So first things first, I'm gonna note one thing. It's heavy, like really heavy, but all kind of up this area. So yeah, I'm guessing it's mainly the heat sinks and to keep the power delivery cool. So speaking about power delivery, 14 plus two phases, which is actually the same as the Z490. Uh, it has the eight plus four pin Pro2, Pro Cool 2 power connectors again, same as the Z490. And yes, the name still very much sucks. So in terms of cooling, obviously, having that amount of power delivery, you are gonna to have to keep it nice and cool. So there is a large heat sink to cover the VRM, which merges kind of into the IO, and that's where I can feel the heavy kind of weight is. Underneath is an L-shaped heat pipe to transfer the heat away from that specific area. It also has four M.2 heat sinks, an M.2 backplate for the PCI Express 4.0 M.2 slot, and yeah, things are looking pretty nice overall. Style-wise, it's pretty much what we'd expect from a Strix board. Memory, now this has support for up to 128 gig of DDR4 with speeds up to, are you ready for it? 5,333 megahertz. I mean, wow. Whether the processors will allow you to do that is another story. In terms of storage, six SATA ports, there are, and this is gonna get very, very confusing now. There's four M.2 slots, but this is where just things get a little bit yeah. The first supports PCI Express 4.0 X4 mode only and will only work on 11th gen CPUs. Other CPUs will render the slot completely useless. The second, well that one supports PCI Express 4.0 if using with an 11th gen CPU or 3.0 if using with a 10th gen. The third supports Gen 3 only through the Z590 chipset on any Socket 1200 CPU. And the fourth supports Gen 3 and SATA again through the Z590 chipset, again with 10th and 11th gen CPUs. 
Confused yet? Good, so am I. Oh yeah, the full slot if you're using a SATA M.2 will also disable the second SATA 6 port, just to make it even more confusing. RAID is available, but means having Intel SSDs in either the CPU and the PCH slots, or other third-party SSDs in just the PCH based slots. Yeah. If you want to find out more, you can just go onto the ASUS website. They probably explain it a lot better than what I just did. Moving on, expansion slots. There are three X16 slots. One, two, three. The top two do have, you know, the kind of armor on there for armor reasons. Uh, but yeah, there's nothing else. No X1 slots, no X4 slots. Now, the first slot operates at PCI Express 3.0 if using with a 10th gen and PCI Express 4.0 if using an 11th gen. If you're using both of the top slots, you can utilize X8X8 or X8X4. Now the third slot is PCI Express 3.0 X4 and it runs through the chipset. Also, the third X16 slot that runs at X4 speeds does also share the bandwidth with SATA 5 and 6. So if it is in use, it will disable those ports. <sighs> I guess there's reasons behind it. You know, the Maximus boards need to have these extra features and that's what kind of warrants, I guess, paying that extra money. Also, if you run the slot at the default X2 mode, then them SATA ports will actually be enabled again, just to confuse you a little bit more. So basically, you need to have a maths and science degree to pretty much understand everything. Also, you do have support for NVIDIA two-way SLI, though for gaming, it's pretty much a dead technology anyway, right? Now, what about the other things on the board? Well, we have USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C front panel connectors here. Uh, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1, which is for two front panel ports, which is here. And also you have two USB 2.0 ports for an additional four front panel ports. There is also a Thunderbolt 4 header on here. Yes, Thunderbolt 4. Opening out pathways for DisplayPort 1.4, Intel Direct Memory Access Protection hubs, support for USB 4 protocol, and all that wonderful stuff. The speed is actually the same as Thunderbolt 3 at 40 gigabits per second, as if that's not quick enough. I mean, come on. Now, kind of going back to cooling, obviously we have fan headers. There are a total of eight fan headers around the board, including AIO pump headers, VRM heatsink fan headers, uh, water pump header, and so much more. There are a total of three addressable RGB Gen 2 headers, a single RGB header, a thermal sensor header, and also a handy dandy debug LED. On the rear I.O. we have a DisplayPort 1.4 port and a HDMI 2.0 port. There's tons of USB ports on here, including a USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type-C port, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports of which two are a Type-A and one is a Type-C, four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. So basically there's a lot of USB, so you should be pretty much covered. There are also two Intel i225V 2.5G ports, Intel Wi-Fi 6E antenna jacks for use with the antennas that we showed you earlier, five gold-plated audio jacks, and an optical SP diff port, which uses the Realtek ALC 4080 HD audio codec and a Savitech SV3H712 amp with premium Japanese capacitors. Lastly, there is a BIOS flashback button and a clear CMOS button, just in case you need it. Pricing wise, it should launch, hopefully, for under $400 because then it paves the way for higher end boards such as the Maximus boards and other boards that are in the Z590 range. Overall though, I mean, who's gonna buy Z590? That's still to be determined, especially after everything that's been going on with AMD. But I quite like the look of this. I'm always a fan of Strix E gaming, F gaming, G gaming, I gaming, H gaming. And uh, yeah, I know my alphabet. But I honestly think it does look nice. I think they've done a good job with it. And hopefully it's given you a little bit of a better understanding as to what the specs are, what they actually mean, what the design is all about, and what is to come. Now all we need is the processors, right? Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.